Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my NHL 20 franchise mode here in Columbus, Ohio. And in the previous episode, we finished up the 2037 NHL entry draft. And you know what? You know what? I thought it went pretty damn well. We made a few moves here, a few moves there, but I think we came out on top. Our later rounds weren't the best, but the piece de la resistance, did I didn't even say that right, but sure, whatever. Bobby Friesen, I already have a nickname for this dude, Mr. Freeze. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I love it. This guy, first thing I'm going to do this episode, I'm going to offer him that entry level deal. I'm also going to give Rodriguez one as well. And then probably Peterson. We're stock we're restocking the farm. We are restocking the farm. Now Miranov, 17 years of age. Uh well, I mean I'm gonna leave him for a year. Let him play in Russia, let him do his thing. He's 17, he's got plenty of time to grow, and I don't know where he where he fits in in the AHL right now. So I'll let him do his thing. Now there are a few things this episode that we have to accomplish. Now, in my hands, before I get to that, I'm sorry, my house is making sounds. I'm currently recording at 11.06 p.m. I just got home uh, from a Christmas thing, seeing my cousins, all that jazz. And my last episode was episode 100, and I forgot to say... Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody out there. Thank you for continuing to watch my content, even though it's the holiday season. I appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. Now let's get back on track. Episode 100 is over. We step into triple digits. Now, continuing this series, we have to change this up. I don't think drastically... I think there are a few pieces here and there that need to change around. Last episode, we traded uh, Kamitsky for a left winger in Jor Jorgensen from Pittsburgh. I was right. I have such a good memory. He had a pretty decent season last year in Pittsburgh. They were riding a high. All their big players, Canzanello, all that jazz. I'm, if you don't remember all the players on that team. I do. I have a fantastic memory. Thank you. He's coming off a 20-goal season. He does say he's a second-line forward, but he's going to fit well on the PK. Extra lines, all that jazz. He'll be a really good defensive player for us. I think he'll help out tremendously. I'm hoping now... Last year, we... Who did I have in his position? Oh, I had Giroux down there on the third line. MP3 all over. Okay. Jorgensen kind of reminds me of Philip Zadina. He's not necessarily a third-line player. He's more of a second-line player, but on this team, he knows what he has to do. He's a power forward, so he fits into that role if need be, and he's going to. But honestly, I think that just makes our team even better. Kamitsky wasn't really fitting anywhere in my lineup that I had going. Now that we had the chance to draft and acquire Bobby Friesen, he's going to have to play some time. I'm not going to let him play in the OHL for a year. We need him right now. If we want to start this quick retool, still be competitive, we need him on the roster playing with really decent players. If we have Bobby Friesen next to Hansel, a playmaker and a sniper, and a power forward on the left wing, that should be a pretty solid third line. Now, with acquiring Jorgensen... I'm never going to be able to say Jorgensen. <laughs> Acquiring Jorgensen and losing Austin Matthews, we will now move Fallon to the center position. We have him locked up for a bunch more years until the end of his career, probably. 92 overall. His center and defensive stats are quite good. His faceoffs are 80. He can fill that role quite easily. He'll be playing with MP3. Giroux will finally move up from that third line. It opens 
up. So Matthews was the bridge player for us. Fallon, I think, had a fantastic year off postseason, but a few players did. Now, if that second line can click, we should be a pretty good team. The first line is obviously going to be great. Woodworth, Savoie, and Wah. Obviously, like, they're always great. But if we can get that second line going again, like years past, we could be en route to another 60-win season. Now, last episode, I did I did talk about trading Miko Yarvinen. Now, we don't have a lot of money to work with. We really don't. So, first thing I'm going to do... Steve Verney does not want an extension. He's currently asking for $11 million. We just don't have that kind of money. He was a good rental. He put up good defensive numbers, not the offensive numbers, but I wasn't expecting that from a rental defenseman. Obviously, we gave up a few pieces for him, but I think the pieces we gave up weren't going to go anywhere. So, thank you for helping us reach the Stanley Cup Finals, Game 7, for the, th for the second straight year. Um... Stanley Cup Finals for the third. But that kind of leaves us a little weak. And losing him, losing Ernie, obviously we lost uh, Butin, who we traded for a first-round draft pick, which turned into Miranov, I believe? Oh, oh, there was a lot of shenaniganery, so go, go back and watch the last few episodes. Losing Ernie and then wanting to trade away Miko Jarvanen is bad news for us. I don't think if we were if this was 2019, if this was the 2019 season and I was paying Miko Jarvin an 86 overall 25 year 25 years of age defenseman, I wouldn't want that contract on my team. Now he's a pretty solid player. He's been iffy. He's la I mean 25 points is usually his his threshold. He's a great defensive player. Him and Stu Cam are great. Now I have to be more diligent right now because we will be losing guys like Stu Cam and Woodworth and Savoie and Moi. All those older guys are going to drop off really quickly and Jarvanen is going to have to be that guy to step up. We're going to have to draft well. So I think as it stands right now, Miko Jarvanen is staying on the team. Unless we find something else that works a lot better for us now. Alfredson has been great. Sucks that he did drop to a low elite. But man, oh man, this guy, he's a great playoff performer. Four goals, two game winning goals. He does want 5.6. That is a bit. I'm going to come back to that in a second. I want to go to all UFAs, UFA, Austin Matthews. You've been great, but we're going to have to let you go, bud. You, you were hurt in the playoffs. We weren't expecting that, obviously, but it has to happen. Comrie? He wants actual money, but I'm going to come back to that. Johansson, uh, if you want a contract, you can come back. Uh, just the tedious things that I'll do with the AHL. I'm not even going to skip it. We'll talk. We'll talk. About what? I don't know. Uh, Merry Christmas, I guess? Now... Oh, I didn't... Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> I talked too long and I gave him a $1 million contract. Snap. So I can trade that away. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, damn it. I really just did that, didn't I? Cool. That's sick. As I was saying, I don't think... No, I'm recording right now, and this episode is going up the day after that it's recorded. So, I'm not expecting my 100 subscriber special to be up. It will be up soon. Don't worry. It'll be worth it. I swear to you. Not right. You get, don't get your expectations high. Please don't. That's not a great idea. <laughs> great. Uh... Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for continuing to watch this series. Now, hopefully everybody signs except Schultz. I don't want him to come back. Oh, there's two Schultz on this team? We got Schultz. He's from 
Germany, and he's from the United States. Okay, RFAs. Uh, we have Alfredson, Anderson. Does he want it? He does. He want to? No, he doesn't want that bad of a contract. Rodine. I forgot we didn't trade him. I I thought I'd try to trade with him in it. I guess he just wasn't a part of it. Can't remember. No, I believe Dietz actually wants money, and we're gonna qualify him right now. I don't see him in this lineup right now. Or, I really don't see him making this lineup. Maybe it, maybe we trade him, flip him for a pick or something, but right now as it stands, he's probably not going to be here. Alfredson? 5.6. Obviously, I'm going to give you that contract. Where is my calculator app? I do this every time. 5.6 over 3 years? What do you want for 8, my dude? Oh, you want a lot of money. Now, I'll go 3 years. Right right at this moment equals 4.76. Now, he's 81 overall. That isn't a hard contract to move at all. It seems a lot of teams have that kind of cap space. So, it wouldn't be a hard contract to move if we needed to. We have a lot of guys coming up. So I don't think that's much of a problem for us. Alfredson, welcome back to the club. Or, oh, you better come back. That's all I'm saying. Goaltending? Uh, I do believe, yeah, Kavanov, as you see, he's an 88 overall now. I'm unsure if that's morale related, because that's two straight Stanley Cups that we've lost in Game 7. I'm sure that plays some sort of role in it, but I'm hoping he stays at the level he is right now, because we do have Gerber locked up for two more years. Which is great for us, just in case things get a little iffy and we have to have a number two play as number one, right? So, Devin, we can get rid of. We don't need him. Barch, we're going to sign to a contract so we can play in the AHL. And I think that's all good for goalie. So we are going to simulate a day. And I did off-screen sign a bunch of scouts. I don't believe there's any coaches that I have to sign, so that's dope. Okay, Shoals, uh-huh. Hopefully everybody comes back. Okay, Strakens is not happy. Dope. 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 Ah, oh, freezing. Nice to meet you. Oh, so Dakota Schultz just didn't sign the one-way contract, which is dope. So we save a million dollars that I don't have to trade, which is awesome. So there's a lot of guys that don't want to come back to this team. Which I'm fine with. Our AHL is really stacked and they want to get money somewhere else. Which I'm totally cool with. You do exactly what you want. But right now as it stands, we don't need you. We don't need you. We can sign you, We can sign these boys somewhere else. I'm too bad Mario Tremblay never panned out. Or Pavlik. I always felt like those guys were going to be pretty awesome for us. Apparently not. So, on my fourth line, right now, I have I have Piton, Mackinnon, and nobody on the bottom, or the fourth line, right winger. So, I believe Comrie is a righty. Uh, he's a fourth line forward, which would work perfect for us. I don't believe the fourth line will be playing many minutes. So, I'm going to go ahead and offer a contract, just in case... We can't find anybody suitable in free agency, and we just go ahead and use him. But if we do find something, that's an easy contract to flip. I know we're not supposed to do that, but it's like against some moral code, but like it, it doesn't matter. So we're going to simulate a day. Let's see, let's see. Okay, bunch of scouts. Comrie. Oh, cool. You don't want that money. Okay, thank God you don't want two million dollars, or we wouldn't even be having this talk. Ah, oh, Comrie, you're like not even worth it at this point. I'll offer you the contract. I'll advance a day. Dope. Cool, so I think that settles all the contract shenanigans. Now I will check coaching staff to make sure that's all working out so head coach hopefully they're not the reason we're doing too bad i know it's all forward coaches but we as a team rely on offense we do 
And before I get to free agency, I will officially change Kill Fallon to a center. He's the center of the future. Fallon, take your rightful place as second line center. And maybe here in the future, you'll get uh, you'll get the shot at the first line. But you are all around an absolute fantastic player. Number 88, boy's a stud. Center playmaker next to a playmaker and a sniper. How much better could that get? That second line should just go off. And I'm really hoping they do. Awesome. So that is all done and over with. So we got Comrie back. Now, I obviously, I'm going to look in free agency and see what I'm going to miss out on. But maybe there's... I, I'm not saying anything, but if there's a move that I look to make, I will make it. Okay, so... 45 contracts on the roster. Who's in free agency this year? Austin Matthews still wanting $9 million. I mean, I'm not going to lie. He's probably worth that for like a third, second line center just to be that offensive dynamo. Right? Exactly. Exactly. A lot of older players dropping to free agents because they want crazy amount of money. Is there any cheap dudes here? Anybody fall through the draft? Not, I mean, we have a low elite, 69, ooh, Dillman, 69 overall, nice, 19 years of age, yeah, I'll sign you, a, sign you to a contract, are you kidding me? Yeah, that works for me. Hemingway, my, yeah, I'll sign you to that contract, are you kidding me, Hemingway? Totally. Anybody else here that piques my interest? Oh, uh, nah, well, 69, over, 69 overall, nice. Top six, 22 years of age. We could sign him just for a trade chip, but I'm not feeling it, you know? Any defensemen fall through? Beauregard, who we, who we just traded, right? Who did we just trade him to? I mean... I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna offer him contract, just in case, you know. <laughs> to, hey, why not? Why not? Why the hell not? That doesn't hurt me. Let's go to goalies. Any goalies out here? Chillin'? Marshall? From the Islanders, I believe? Yeah, the Islanders. He, he's, he's always great. He'll be he'll be picked up, paid a bunch of money, he'll be fine. Le Perrier... Boro? Was he our goalie at one point? He was. Holy hell, we have a lot of really awesome goalies. Jean Mathot? Jeez Louise. <laughs> Do we... Cece! Oh my lord, there's a lot of our goalies out there. So, any goalies fall through the draft? Nah, not really. Not really. Ah, we have a bunch of goalies as it is. That doesn't really hurt my feelings. Now, I'm gonna look here. Okay. Okay, Mikel Pressburg, which would be dope to bring back, but we have $1.3 million to work with currently. Just Barry Cockney I mean, what, at this point, like, what am I trying to, like, well, I have my roster right in front of me. Oh, Swanson. Hello there. 80 overall, he wants league men. Yeah, yeah, welcome to the club. You come to this club. He's not a... Is he an RFA? He's not owned by anybody currently. Yes, please, 25 years of age. Add that to the, at least be like a scratch player. That'd be dope. We also have Dietz. Which wouldn't be that hard to deal with. Trade him away for something. He, I don't see him fitting on this team. He's too good for the fourth line and I think my fourth line I'm more I'm not putting as many awesome players on the fourth line anymore I'm making sure our top three lines are just banging because our coaches tend to roll three lines right so what's the point of putting an 85 overall on that line if they're not even going to get a fair shake so we do have a Williams wanting league men but he does want ah uh, maybe I'll come back to that 
Oh my god, all these defensemen wanting plenty of money. Arg, 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 arg. Just anybody chilling like a villain wanting League Min? Hemingway, which would be dope. Okay, so I think that's about... We got an Ovechkin here. Cup of haters. Yeah, I think that's good. And I think I'm going to sim a few days. Hopefully all these guys come to the club. Comrie for a third. Uh, no. I'm considering it. But Dillman signs. Dope. Beauregard. He's gone with a different group. I mean, hey, man, it happens. As I was saying. I can't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> I'm that tired. I don't think this is going to be a long episode. I it's pretty late. <laughs> I know I sh I uh, I got to make sh keep this streak going, okay? Jaden Swanson signs the contract, which is huge. Kyler Hemingway signs and I think that wraps up all the free agent signings. Now I will head into the season and to end up end of the episode i'll show you all the lines and the next episode i believe i'll do the entire season simulation does that work for you it works for me so i believe i have my 2037 2038 regular season lines all ready to go there are a few things that i might have to tweak here and there but i want to show you what we are working with here in 2037 now, obviously, the first line ain't going nowhere. They're getting older, though, which is really heartbreaking. Woodworth, 35, trying to go for his 11th, 11th 100-point season in a row, I believe, in this man. He's getting plenty of ice time. He's trying to go for that. Matthew Savoie, who is going to start dropping off, I believe. He was a 95, and he's slowly but surely falling down. But for right now, he is the guy that we need. He is the franchise center. And the guy who usually always gets overlooked, Joshua Waugh, is still a beast. That's just the truth. Guy puts up 100-point seasons here, there, everywhere. 600, 695 goals, he'll hit 700 this year. 1,500 points. What do I have to say? So many 100-point seasons here. Guy's a beauty. Now, as you see right there, he is currently a top six forward now. Sucks, because that means he will probably be the first one to drop into retirement, because you see right there, Savoie still has his potential, and Woodworth still has his potential. I mean, Waugh's still a beauty, but the created players, I've noticed, tend to go first, so Savoie and Waugh will drop before Woodworth depends because Woodworth lasts maybe two, three seasons. I'm not sure. But the first line is sticking together. Second line, Kilo Fallon finally getting the chance to prove himself as a franchise player. 92 overall. Centerman drafted as a left winger, two way forward for the first few years of his career. He's getting that shot and I'm hoping he proves himself. Eight year contract, he'll he'll be the guy. He will be the guy. Maxime Prohorkin, who is going to be the guy in the next year. 44 goals last year. He's looking to just keep going, playing next to a playmaker. And then Jacques Giroux, 29 years of age, 85 overall. I'm hoping that he jumps up again because of a morale increase. I mean, we just lost the Stanley Cup, but he was an 87 overall playing third line time last year. So I think putting him back up on the second line will help out his production a lot. Third line, which I'm very excited about. You see the plus three right there? Sniper in Carol Hansel, 22 years of age. Guy usually puts up a decent amount of goals. 20 goals last year, 33, 31 goals the year before in the AHL. Coming off a rookie season, pretty damn good playoff run. And he's playing next to the franchise center. He is an elite 
he's a medium elite. But this guy carry is going to carry us into the future. Third overall pick in 2037, 81 overall at 18 years of age. He's the guy. Bobby Friesen, Mr. Freeze, ice to meet you. He's the guy playing next to the biggest depth piece that we actually have in Ola Jorgensen. 84 overall, power forward. He is a second line forward, but I think he'll mold into that third line pretty well. He's playing plenty of penalty kill and a bit of power play. So I'm hoping that evens things out. Fourth line looks a little bit weaker than usual. Mackinnon, 82 overall, 24 years of age. He'll be fine. He's playing plenty of extra extra line time. You got Zach Baton, and then you got... Donald Comrie, which we have a lot of substitutions in the AHL and scratch players that we could potentially move out for Donald Comrie, if need be, or Paton. right? So I didn't put as much attention into this fourth line because I think the third line is fantastic. And our coaches are more prone to roll three lines instead of four. So these guys will be getting the attention and... The fourth line is not that bad of a lineup, or a line. Defense is looking a lot better than I had originally anticipated. Of course, the franchise defenseman in Stu frickin' Cam, he still got that potential. What a beauty, 95 overall, 34 years of age. Did I say he's 34? Playing with Miko Jarvanen, they'll have a great season. Second pairing is Pierre Jacobson and Abel Carlos. Abel Carlos is technically technically a top two defenseman but he's getting a lot of a lot of extra time in other places i'm hoping if i need to i'll put stu cam down there because stu cam's playing like every line or in extra lineups then on the four uh, then on the third pairing you got felipe otires we'll never be able to <laughs> say that felipe felipe oh my god i can't say it felipe wow that was really hard he is a 22 years, 22 year old, 80 overall top four defenseman. Dope. And then you got Jurgen Alfredson, fresh off a five million, four point seven seven five million dollar contract. 23 years of age. I'm hoping he, he continues his production because I'd rather put Pierre Jacobson here on the second pairing because he's got the age advantage and 79 overall. I'm hoping he doesn't drop in morale because he's the future on the right-handed side, right? Ah, oh, see what I did there? Extra lineups are looking like this. Woodworth getting plenty of time. It's looking really nice. This power play unit, unit should do justice. Now, the first time in forever, I've broken up that first, first line power play unit and put Pro Hork in there and Watt down on this pairing and they are a plus three. So the power play should be pretty good four man is looking like this penalty kill is looking like Jorgensen Jorgensen I will never be able to say that Samu Makinen Piton and Fallon I mean what's his face offs ah Piton can play wing doesn't matter he's been doing it most of his career and three man is looking like that we can go into extra lineups I guess it's looking like that Obviously, three on three is looking like that. Mm, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, what a team. We have such a fantastic team. And I think we should be good. I think this is the best team we've had in a long, long time. Now, I think that's it for this episode. No, I got to show you the goalies. Obviously, Vacheslav Kavanov. He's trying to rebound from last year after a weird statistical season in the regular year. Uh, regular season. He's looking to turn that round, and Max Gerber is the backup. Scratched players are Johan Kruger. He doesn't have he doesn't have any more development left. He's 81 overall. He's a sniper, so he can step into that role for anybody if they get injured. If it's a serious injury, obviously I'll deal with it, but he's a good replacement player. And then Christian Johansson. He he looks all around pretty solid as a scratch player. Nothing nothing to be too upset about there. In the AHL, I'll go through it really quickly. Next episode, I can go more in-depth. 
Hemingway, who we just signed, Swanson, who we just signed, and Fragapane. What a beauty, 21 years of age, hoping this guy grows pretty quickly. Same with R Riviette, Rodine, Maloche, Pedersen, Jun Inla, Dillman, who we just signed, 20 years of age, 71 overall, low elite. Zanata, Kimpanen, no, I'm not even going to try to say that. Defense is looking scary good with all of our young prospects. Harrington, 21 years of age, and he's a top four. Then you got Henry Schwartz, who is 75 overall, 20 years of age, top four. Then you got Mikhail Kudobin, who's 74, 20 years of age, top four. That is looking gorgeous. Love that. Anderson, Jacola, and then you got Zimmerman, who is kind of the iffy man. He's, he hasn't grown much in these last few seasons. So all these guys here, hoping they're pretty good. Goaltenders, I don't know if I'm going to trade Mestri. Because we do have, I believe, Bartsch, who I really want to get into the lineup. But that's a problem for next episode. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, please leave a like, leave a comment, share with people who you think may enjoy this sort of thing. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.